Japan is a country of innovation and advancement, with new and exciting technologies being invented and upgraded all the time. They're also coming up with so many unique ways to solve problems, many of which the rest of the world could benefit from. For now, most of their wonderful inventions remain solely in Japan. From robots for nearly every industry to smart toilets, here are 20 things that can't be seen anywhere but in Japan. Number 20. Robots Most developed countries have welcomed robots with open arms, but it's clear to see Japan is leading the way and is among the first countries to embrace their place in society. Japan identified a problem with a rapidly aging society and declining population and plugged the gap in the workforce by developing robots that could do jobs there weren't enough humans to cover. It's now not uncommon to see cleaning robots sipping around homes and schools and security robots monitoring and patrolling office and retail buildings. Robots are even becoming commonplace in nursing homes, with dementia patients in particular reacting positively to their presence. While some people might think that robots are taking over the jobs of many workers in Japan, they appear to be complementing the human workforce rather than replacing it. Perhaps not surprisingly, robots are more than a form of labor, they're also companions. Elderly people are embracing robots as a type of child or grandchild figure, and some are even making their clothes and treating them as members of the family. But they aren't just becoming companions like children and friends, but partners as well. Some adult storekeepers have said that robots are a booming business, with people buying them as affection objects. There truly is something and someone for everyone, it seems. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Tokyo's Population Tokyo is one of the largest urban sprawls in the world, with a population of over 37 million people spanning 844 square miles. About 23 wards make up the city, along with three prefectures within the metropolitan area. In the greater Tokyo area alone, you'll find a quarter of Japan's population. The 23 wards in Tokyo are three times as big as Yokohama, which has about 3.7 million residents. How absurd is it to think you can live in the same city as someone, but still be 800? miles away from them. Tokyo has always been the largest city in Japan and one of the largest in the world. By the time the 1720s rolled around, it was the first city in Asia with over a million people. It was named Tokyo in 1868 and surpassed 2 million residents by 1900. Just 40 years later, over 7 million people called Tokyo and the wider metro area home. Even though incredible population growth has been a trend in Tokyo, quite the opposite is happening now. Tokyo, and Japan as a country, is experiencing a population decline due to low fertility rates, an aging population, and minimal immigration. It is now one of the oldest countries in the world, and Tokyo forms part of this trend. Number 18. Kids clean their own school. The sad reality is that many kids in schools today might make a mess on the floor and not worry about cleaning it up because their school has cleaning staff to take care of that. While that might be true in many countries, it is not the case in Japan. The children are the cleaners. It's a well-known fact that the majority of mess in classrooms is created by the students, so why shouldn't they be the ones to clean it up? Studies have shown that children are much happier in tidy classrooms, so teaching them how to clean up after themselves may mean they benefit from a much better schooling experience. Many schools have programs that get students from age 6 to 18 involved in cleaning. They spend 15 minutes at the end of the school day with cloths, brooms, and vacuum cleaners, ensuring their classroom environment is as clean as they found it. There are many benefits associated with this practice, aside from just saving money on cleaning staff and having students overall happier in their work. They also learn about responsibility, gain essential life skills, and have an opportunity to talk to their peers. Teachers have noticed how this 15-minute activity has strengthened the bond between students, while also allowing them to talk to their teachers outside of the standard formal learning environment. Number 17. 
Living in Small Apartments the tiny home revolution has been taken off worldwide for a number of years now, but living in small apartments has been a regular part of life for people living in Japan for many, many years. As you can likely guess from how densely populated their large cities are, space is a premium, so each person gets very little of it to themselves. Many people live in tiny apartments as small as 10 meters squared or 110 square feet, which is definitely not a lot. There's usually just a small bathroom, a small kitchen area, and a bedroom within the living space that has to be built for multi-purpose living. Most living rooms in these tiny apartments have futons since they can function as a comfortable bed, then be folded away during the day to become a sofa for the home's occupants and guests. Some of these apartments do come with washing machines, but generally not a laundry. Many people simply use coin-operated laundries where they can do their washing and drying without worrying about taking up precious apartment space. As you can imagine, such a small space would be prone to clutter, so many Japanese people invest in organizational furniture and storage to help them make their living environment as comfortable as possible. Number 16. Unique Fitness-Themed Bar did you know that if you live in Japan, you can say you're going to the gym, but you're really going to a bar to drink with your friends? In Japan, there's a women's gym called Muscle Girls, which also doubles as a bar with a fitness theme for women. The bar slash gym is the first and only one in the country dedicated to weightlifting and was founded by a fitness enthusiast called Eri Muscle. The establishment started as a gym but became more of an entertainment business when they included a bar. It serves alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages and is a place you can come to work on your fitness but then spend time with like-minded people. You can also enjoy entertainment in the form of muscle girl servers who flex their muscles, dance, and train all while being the person you ask for a drink. You can only attend this bar by reservation, and it's gone entirely online with the COVID-19 pandemic. But before long, it'll be back to being a popular hotspot with fitness enthusiasts who can't decide whether they feel like working out or having a drink with friends. Number 15. Kawaii Fashion Kawaii is a combination of many Japanese words, meaning the ability to be loved, and one's face is a glow. Now, it's a type of fashion that incorporates everything cute, such as the innocence, brightness, and simplicity of your childhood. Basically, people who adopt the kawaii fashion trend in Japan wear bright colors, a range of cute accessories, and childlike clothing. Kawaii culture first took off in schools when mechanical pencils were introduced into schools in the 1970s. The fine tip, so unlike traditional pencils, allowed children to change their writing style and make it more cute. This cute trend spread to other accessories, and that's when Hello Kitty made its way into the public eye with a pink bow, cute oversized head, and cuddly body. Now, it's not uncommon to see people walking around with childlike socks, buttons, hair clips, keychains, and even pastel hair colors. There are even stores dedicated to selling these kinds of items, like Pink Latte, 6% Doki Doki, Milk, and Baby the Stars Shine Bright. Sure, kawaii fashion isn't everyone's cup of tea, but it seems to have taken off across many parts of Japan. Number 14. Vending Machines Everywhere Soda machines and snack machines are located in many parts of the U.S. and the world. It's so convenient to be able to walk down a street and pop a few coins into a machine in exchange for a refreshing beverage. But the vending machines in Japan are just so much more incredible. You'll find them almost everywhere, from in front of shops and down alleyways to in residential and commercial areas. They also contain all manner of convenient items like soft drinks, beer, sake, cigarettes, tea, coffee, candy, fresh produce, and even a hot food food like soup. When you start noticing vending machines everywhere on your journey across Japan, you may be curious about how many there actually are. Well, there's about one vending machine for every 23 people, totaling around 5 million. That's the population of New Zealand. Annual sales from these machines total over $60 billion, so it's no surprise they keep popping up everywhere. It also helps that most vending machine owners don't need to worry about theft or vandalism all that much. Japan has some of the lowest crime rates, and even vending machines housing cash and products in dark alleys are generally perfectly safe. I'm sure if you tried, you could complete your entire week's grocery shopping needs just in what you could buy in vending machines on the local streets of Japan. Number 13. Smart Toilets 
You know, the toilets in Japan are something special when visitors pretty much have to read instruction guides on how to use them. Toilets in Japan can be pretty overwhelming if you're not used to them, but once you learn all their features, you'll struggle to go back to your boring old regular toilet back at home. There are many different features and functions far beyond your standard flush option. You can enjoy a spray, gentle spray, and feminine spray, followed by a dry. You can also press the on and off button, stop, have it make a sound, and turn the volume up or down. Toilets in Japan are so advanced, you can adjust the water pressure to weak or strong and enjoy targeted water to the front or back. You'll even be able to make use of the power deodorizer or change the water to warm or whichever temperature you please. Once you've done your business and made yourself comfortable, you can choose a big or small flush based on what you did. Perhaps one of the most exciting things about many toilets in Japanese homes and businesses is that they're self-cleaning. The bowls are resistant to staining, and electrolyzed water is put in the bowls to disinfect them. Imagine not having to scrub a toilet ever again. Yeah, I'm moving to Japan. Number 12. Limited Edition Kit Kats. Kit Kats are hands down easily one of the most delicious treats. There are some pretty lovely flavors like standard chocolate and even dark chocolate, but if you thought those two flavors were exciting, wait until you see what Japan has in store for you. Out of all countries in the world, they would have to have some of the most unique flavors, most of which can't be found outside of Japan. To get them, you have to purchase them from Japanese businesses and have them flown into your country at a cost. In Japan, there are six regular flavors which you'll find at all times of the year. These include the original chocolate you'll find in most other countries stock in Kit Kats, along with dark chocolate, raspberry, green tea, roasted green tea, and strong green tea. Other flavors pop up annually, like mint chocolate and Sakura flavors, to welcome in the Sakura season of spring. There are also new flavors released for limited periods of time, such as Easter banana, Sakura mochi, Sakura Japanese sake, and Yuzu matcha. But that's not all. Each region may also release flavors that you can't find in other regions. They generally feature easily accessible and unique ingredients highlighted in those particular regions. Purple sweet potato is a favorite flavor in Okinawa, while maple leaf shaped steamed cake goes down a treat in Hiroshima. There are even fancy Kit Kats with high grade chocolate and delicious ingredients like dried fruits. These aren't found everywhere, but have tantalizing flavors like passion fruit and cacao from exotic places. Which strange flavor have you tried? There are so many different ones. Number 11. Futuristic Capsule Hotels. When you're going for a night out away from home, or you're passing through a town and need somewhere to rest before hitting the road once more, it doesn't make much sense to spend a fortune on a hotel room. You won't even be awake to enjoy it, and there are many unnecessary amenities when you're not in it for long. Japan realized that big, lavish hotels are not always necessary, so they created capsule hotels for those who can't justify parting with enormous sums of money for accommodation. These capsule hotels are tiny, tiny spaces where there's just enough space to sleep and maybe charge a device. They're generally for single night occupation only, and many are positioned on men only and women only floors. What you can expect and your comfort level varies from one hotel to the next, which is pretty much what you get with traditional hotel rooms anyway. Some are more modern and futuristic than others, and some have enough space for a desk and are of a regular height so you don't have to crawl inside. You may even be able to book double ones, which have enough room for one or two people to spread out and enjoy a peaceful night's slumber. These capsule hotels vary in price, but it's not uncommon to see them advertised from $20, which is a mere fraction of what you might pay for a proper hotel room. Number 10. Lavish Love Hotels you're not always at home when you get caught up in the throes of passion, but how are you supposed to take care of that problem if you're not at home? Well, in Japan, they have dedicated love hotels. These hotels are set up for the specific purpose of catering to secret lovers, couples, and one-time visitors. While these types of hotels may exist in the US and elsewhere, they aren't actively advertised and are often hidden out of sight. Japan operates a bit differently, and these hotels are easy to spot nestled amongst most other businesses. You can pay by the hour or or by the night, and rates vary depending on what you need and how long you're staying for. There are also room service and food options you can order to make your experience even more special. The concept of these types of hotels came from the 1960s when it wasn't uncommon for young couples to live with their extended family. Alone time was next to impossible to get, so the first hotel of its kind opened in Osaka to combat that problem. The trend took off, and it seems like it's showing no signs of slowing down. 
Number 9. Free Tissues Most of us would have at one time or another been handed a promotional flyer with some kind of product or service being offered. You might have taken one to be polite, but fired it into the nearest trash can once you were out of sight of the person handing it to you. The reality is those advertisers know what's happening to the flyers they're spending so much money on, so they decided to come up with another way of making sure you keep anything that has their branding and information on it. And that's where pocket tissues come in. Walk down your average busy street in Japan, and you'll likely be handed a convenient pack of tissues emblazoned with branding for sports clubs, loan companies, new massage boutiques, restaurants, gambling centers, and more. These businesses know that tissues are convenient in everyday life, and they want you to see their branding as much as possible. And who doesn't use tissues? Let's be honest. If you're not using them to wipe your running nose, you're sneezing or coughing into them, using them to remove bugs from surfaces, or wiping dust off your spectacles. They're convenient for so many different things, so it's actually quite a genius move to offer them with advertising, instead of just trying to promote your wares on flyers that just have a single use. Number 8 Wet Towels Before Meals Anytime you visit a high-end restaurant in Japan, or even just a typical restaurant, a waitstaff member may bring a basket or a bowl of wet towels to your table. If you've never had this happen before, you may not know what it means or what you're supposed to do with those towels. These towels are for cleaning your hands before and after a meal, and they are known as oshibori. This word means wet towels, and they may be hot or cold depending on the season, although it's more common to see hot ones than cold ones. Some of the towels have lemon juice added to them as a type of degreaser, while some come in single-use packaging with cleaning solutions like alcohol. This tradition started in Japan, but is actually becoming more common in Western restaurants as well. And for obvious reasons, since most of us like to feel clean before and after a meal. You can use them to clean your hands and mouth and get all the stickiness of food off of your fingers. However, it's considered rude to use them for anything else, such as behind your ears or your neck. Number 7. Rendoseru Backpacks how long did your school backpack last you? Maybe it held firm for an entire school year before the fabric ripped and the stitching came apart. Or perhaps it only lasted a single semester. Well, in Japan, school bags, known as Rendesuru backpacks, are expected to last a child throughout their entire elementary school years. Unlike many of our packs, they have no problem lasting this long and remaining in excellent condition. Rendesuru backpacks are special in Japan. They have a lot of cultural significance and first became popular after soldiers carried a rucksack with styling from the Netherlands. After that, children of nobility used to use backpacks fashioned after a rando seru, which honored Japanese soldiers. Now, nearly every Japanese school kid has a rando seru backpack, even though they are incredibly expensive as far as backpacks go. The minimum you would likely spend on one new is $50, but you can spend up to around $1,200 on good brands. Boys usually have black ones, and girls typically have red, and they house books, clutter, school supplies, and pretty much everything they need throughout their schooling days up until sixth grade. After that point, they can be passed down to siblings or even get used around the house for many years after the child's schooling years are over. Number 6. Kotatsu for Comfortable Winters Many Japanese homes have thin walls, which has made them quite hard to heat. Underfloor heating has made a massive difference in recent years, but you won't find too many Japanese people who haven't enjoyed the heat of a kotatsu from time to time. Kotatsus are low tables with a type of unique futon placed over the top. Underneath it is an electric heater that keeps your lower body warm while you sit at the low table with a snack, book, or beverage. Even though they became less popular after the invention of underfloor heating, their affordability has still kept them relevant. They're often much more affordable to run than other forms of heating. The modern-day kotatsu, which is relatively clean and efficient, is based on a type of heating during the 14th century Muromachi era. Some homes used to have hearths in the flooring called irori, and charcoal was added to create heat. Later, seating platforms were added to make a definition between heating and cooking, and a quilt was put over the top to stop the heat from dissipating. They never used to be made by any specific manufacturer, but you can now buy them on websites like Amazon. Every Everyone deserves to be comfortable and warm in winter. Number 5. Blue Traffic Lights Red means stop. 
Orange means wait. Green means go. Those are the basics of traffic lights, and we all know what they mean. Even children who aren't old enough to get behind the wheel of a car know that mom and dad have to stop at a red light and can go at a green one. But if you're driving in Japan, you're probably going to get quite the fright when you realize you're stopped in front of a set of lights with red, orange, and blue. That's right, there's no green light. Hundreds of years ago, the Japanese language only had words to describe four colors. Blue, red, black, and white. If you wanted to describe anything green, you'd have to use the word for blue, which is out, and was pretty much the closest color to green anyway. That worked pretty well for a while, but people started using the word Midori, which used to mean sprout, to describe green. And then chaos ensued. Midori was a shade of Ao, but Ao is blue, so society was on the brink of collapse. Not quite, but you get the confusion. The traffic lights in Japan used to be green, and they complied with international traffic laws. But linguists in Japan were frustrated at how Ao was being used to describe the green when it was Midori. So in 1973, the government agreed to use the bluest shade of green they could find for their traffic lights while still obeying all traffic laws. Number 4. Otoshi Dishes You Didn't Order Waiting for your food at a restaurant can be hard. You arrive hungry, order, and have to wait as long as it takes for them to cook your food to be able to eat. No one likes waiting, but, you know, food takes as long as it takes. To help you feel as satisfied with the service as possible, Japanese restaurants and gastro pubs that serve food and alcohol offer something called otoshi. It's a light and small snack that your table can enjoy while you wait for your meal to arrive. Sometimes this comes out with your drinks or as soon as you're given a menu. The strangest part is you never ask for these small snacks nor are they offered for free. They are provided at your table, and you're charged a small fee on your bill to cover the costs. It's generally about what you would pay for a tip in the U.S., but is more closely related to what you might pay in a restaurant in Italy to cover the costs of bread, condiments, and oil. What you receive as a toshi can depend on the restaurant or dining establishment. Some serve refreshing Japanese salads or pickled dishes, while others opt for hearty miso soup. You might even be served fermented squid guts known as shiokara, or simmered meat or veggies called Nimono. Number 3. Nameplates on Houses there are over a hundred thousand family homes in Japan, which is hard to believe when you learn they never even used to have surnames. Everyone just had first names, and later only the samurai could have surnames, which meant 90% of the population in around 1587 would be referred to by one name only. Rules became relaxed over time, and peasants were allowed to have family names for local use. In 1875, the Meiji government allowed all people to have surnames, and it even became a requirement. But that doesn't explain why many homes throughout Japan have nameplates made of materials like natural stone, glass, wood, metal, and acrylic on their doors with their family names. That tradition actually came about because of an earthquake and tsunami followed by fires that devastated two of Japan's largest cities. About 140,000 people died. To help find missing family members and friends, people used to put their names on their homes, hoping that people could be traced back to where they belonged. It then took off as a common trend and helped ensure people could get their mail safely and make communities safer. Number 2. Yoda Kiara the mascots we have in the U.S. and even in other parts of the world mostly relate to sports, like the Philly Fanatic and the San Diego Chicken. But in Japan, they have mascots known as Yorokiara for the many different prefectures. Most, if not all, Yorokiara, or mascots, in Japan are made to be quite cute and appealing to children, but they also have important roles and meanings. All 47 prefectures in Japan have at least one mascot, and Osaka has over 40. Their jobs are to promote regional tourism. All Yorokiara must represent love for a region or hometown, and the characters' movements have to be awkward, unstable, or unique in some way. The mascots should also be lovable, laid back, and unsophisticated to make them even more appealing. There are so many unique and exciting mascots that you may have seen or heard about, such as Hikunian the Samurai Cat created by the Hikone City Government, Kumamon the Black Bear from the Kumamoto Prefecture, and Funasiai, the yellow pear-shaped mascot from the city of Funabashi in Chiba. Each prefecture's mascot is loved by most of its residents, so you can generally find merchandise for sale featuring it. Number 1. Rice Paddy Art 
Rice is a staple food in many Asian countries, and over 90% of the world's entire supply comes from and is consumed in the Asia-Pacific region. But we're not just eating it, we're creating art with it, too. Well, at least Japan is. For over two decades, about 1,300 volunteers in northern Japan's village of Inokudate spend countless hours creating an intricate design with different varieties of rice that create a work of art once it grows. When it blooms, thousands of tourists visit the fields to see what's been created, and it's hard not to be amazed by what you see. Inokudate was always a rice farming area, but it was experiencing a declining population and rising debt levels. They came up with rice patty art as a way to combat that problem. A former high school teacher, Atsushi Yamamoto, comes up with the design from a photo and reduces the many hundreds or thousands of colors from it into just seven that make up the different farm field rice varieties. It's so interesting to learn about how other countries live and how we're all so different from each other. Have you seen any of these predominantly Japanese features in other countries? Which one intrigued you the most? I'm desperate for a Kit Kat now. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.